So welcome back. And I have to record so that you guys, you know, can connect what we were doing before the disconnection to what we were what we're doing now. Okay. okay. So we talked about these two sentences, sorry, and we were explaining, you know, the uh what what uh, is going on in each sentence. So the first sentence we said that it's made of two clauses, as you can see. Woman is the subject of the verb, is filling, all right. Um, and that is the subject of the verb is. So that is a is also a clause. Remember, we said that this is the dependent clause, and that is the subject, and it's the connector also, right? Um, the two clauses are joined with the connector that, like, without that, you know, we cannot really join these two with each other, right? Um, okay, so I'm welcoming students in also. Uh, notice that in this example, the word that. What's the goal? What how does it what does it serve here? Serve means what, what does it do in the sentence? Two functions, two roles, okay? At the same time, it is the subject of the verb is, and it is the connector that joins the two clauses, right? The adjective clause, all of this is the adjective clause, huh? That is on the table, uh, describes the noun glass. So this adjective clause, what is its goal? To describe what the glass, which is the noun, and this noun is an object, you know, of the sentence, right? If you take a look at the second example, guys, we want to take a look at the second example, and enlarge the screen a little bit, and let's look at the explanation and look at all these details, you know, over here. So let me just remove, sometimes there are certain screens that mess up, you know, mess up things for me and I can't see. So the glass that is on the table contains milk. In the second example, which is this over here, huh? there are also two clauses. What are the clauses? This one, like you have to ignore this first. Huh? And then you say this without this. And then you say this, all right? Because this explains or describes the glass, right? Yeah. So the two clauses are glass is the subject of the verb. Uh, subject of which verb? This one over here contains, and that is the subject uh, uh, of what of is. All right. In this example, that also serves two functions. See, they use the word functions. Uh, uh, serves two functions at the same time. Uh, and um, it is the subject of the verb, right? It's the subject of this verb is. Uh, and it is the connector that joins the two clauses. So this connector connects this clause with the bigger clause, the glass contains milk, right? Mm -hmm. Because that is on the table is an adjective. So this, what is what is this clause? It's called an adjective clause. And it describes what the noun glass, the glass or glass, okay? It directly follows glass. See, it follows this clause, glass, right away, okay? I don't know, is there anybody who wants to welcome, wants me to welcome them in? I'm doing admit all for those who are not in. Okay, so we want to move on now to the next part of the skill. Let's see what we also have. I think now we're going to have an example where you now choose the answer that best completes the sentence. You know, we always have those kinds of sentences after we explain a few sentences. Uh -huh. uh, and you and connect it to the skill. What we do, the next step is that we have, we get, you know, like a sentence, you know, that needs from us to, you know, let me say, choose you know the answer see here as we said then we have a discussion little discussion and explanation then we have the table and then we have the sentences that we need to work on okay so this is just how it is every time let's take a look at this sentence look at it guys please examine it and tell me don't be without looking at the explanation and the answer what is the answer you know, to this sentence. If you have the answer and you can explain, raise your hand and help us out. So do we say the notebook is on the table has four sections or the notebook, which is on the book, on the table, I'm sorry, has four sections or because the notebook is on the table has uh, four sections in the notebook is on the table has four sections. Afnan, Maghdadi, it's great to have you and to, you know, listen to you speaking and explaining. It's been a while, Afnan, right? Uh, okay, good afternoon, Doctor. Good afternoon. Okay, uh, so in this sentence, we have um, two verbs, is and has, mm -hmm. and two clauses. Uh, so we need two subjects and a connector. And exactly. the best option for this is the um, choice B, the notebook, which. 
Excellent. So the notebook which is on the table has four sections. Good job. Good job. Excellent job. So if we put B here, the notebook, uh, which is on the table. So try to ignore which is on the table because if you say the notebook has four sections, now we want to describe the notebook, which is on the table, uh, is the description for the notebook, all right, together. Because it's we need two, because there are two clauses as your friend here, you know, Dr. Afnan said, all right, she said that we need a subject, you know, because there's an here, because there's already another subject here, and because there's a verb here, and there's a verb here. So we need a subject here because these are two clauses. At the same time, we don't want to forget Mm -hmm. that, you know, let me say um, that we also need a connector for these two clauses to be connected with, or linked, you know, with each other, all right? In order to link two clauses, we need a connector, all right? So we don't want to forget that too, okay? Um, okay, who um, wants to, or let's say before we want to go to the questions, let's take a look at the explanation here. Thank you for your explanation, Dr. Afnan. In this example, you should notice immediately a sentence has two verbs, as your friend just said, is and has. So there is, is there it is, I'm sorry. Here is is and there is has. And each of them needs a subject. Doctor? Yes. Doctor? Mm -hmm. uh, you tell us uh, last lecture, we skip uh, this skills uh, 12 uh, because uh, Go to uh, 15 skills. Yeah, I did. We talked about this. Where were you when we talked about this? We said we. I decided to change my mind. Because the connection uh, is the... Uh, I forget the uh, question. It's okay. Connection is the... It's okay, Dr. Sahar. I said that this skill we're going to um, include because it's not that hard. And um, uh, and I decided that it's going to be included. We're just going to exclude the reduced clauses, okay? Not this one, okay? I changed my mind. Okay, doctor. I changed my mind. Okay, okay. 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 okay so, doctor. yeah, we talked about this. It's okay. Um, so uh, we are back to, you know, explaining the sentence over here. Um, and like we said here that, you know, that table is not a subject. Huh? Where is table? Here it is. It's not a subject, all right? Uh, the subject is whatever is here, which is, your, as your friend said, you know, uh, the notebook, okay? It's the subject for has, okay? But at the same time, we want, you know, something that is also a connector of the clause, so we, which is also the subject, which is which. So which over here huh, is going to be the connector, and at the same time, the subject for this clause, which is the adjective clause, all right? I don't know. If I were you, I would just go over this. Let's move a little bit, guys. You guys also, you know, go through the explanation on your own a little, okay? Take a look at the table now, okay? So the following chart, or you can call it a chart, you can call it a table, no problem, table, not like this table, ah, but, you know, it's a, you know, let me say like some kind of a chart that, you know, has like a summary of what we were talking about or what, you know, that explains, you know, different sentences that have um, adjective clause, adjective clauses, and the clause itself has the subject and the connector as one, okay? So, and the sentence pattern used with, the, see the word pattern, pattern means guys, you know, like alib, namap, all right? Something that is, you know, in the form of, you know, that is constantly used, like a kind of, you know, division of a sentence or kind of organization of a sentence that is constantly used, all right, by the speakers of the language. So anyway, take a look. Sometimes we have, we're talking here about the connectors, which are also the subjects of the clause. Okay, of which clause are we talking about here when we talk about the clause? The dependent or the independent? Let me listen to you guys. Are we talking here about the dependent clause or the independent clause? Independent, independent. Think, think. Independent or dependent? When dependent. We talk about Yes, of course, dependent. Independent means, guys, mustaqille. It looks like a sentence. It can do without a connector, even. It can live its life without a connector. But dependent means that from the word depend. Uh, dependent means it depends on something else, okay? What does it depend on? It depends on, on the independent clause, okay? It depends on something else because it's really used as a description for the independent clause anyway for part of the independent clause okay so and listen guys i want to tell you a secret again and again 
anything that has a connector is dependent because when you say because i know you there's a a connector huh that i like there is a connector okay explain it in arabic even in arabic when you explain it all right when you translate it you know that oh what are you talking about what is this connected to so because i like it huh لأني أحبه uh, let me say who types fast الذي يطبع you know بسرعة all right you feel that this is not you know something that can stand on its own it depends on something else what are we talking about here you ask yourself or you ask the speaker what are you talking about what are you connecting how can you connect this to something else you see that's why we say dependent okay so always use uh, uh, you know a connector at the beginning, you know, of your clause and finish it up, it's not finished, you know, it depends on something else. So that's why we call it, de it depends. It depends means it's dependent, okay? And dependent means it can't stand alone. It doesn't look like a sentence, if even if you want it to look like one, unless you remove the connector, okay? If you remove the connector, then there's a different story, all right, altogether. Anyway, guys, so um, if we have an adjective clause and the adjective clause, you know, let me say begins with a connector and the connector itself is the subject. It could be who for people. It could be which for things. It could be that for people and things. See, that is the most common because it covers people and it covers things. It covers this and it covers that. Okay. That's why we have that, you know, most of the times. So look at the sentence, guys. This is the sentence. All of this is the sentence which has two clauses, okay? So she needs a secretary. This is an independent clause. Independent means because if we don't have this section, you feel that it's a sentence, okay? She needs a secretary, all right? All right, it seems that this is a businesswoman who has lots going a lot going on in her life and in work and, you know, um, she needs some help, you know, to organize, you know, you know, let me say the office to organize her daily activities, you know, to help her get through the work that she needs to do. All right. Yeah. So she needs a secretary. What kind of secretary does she want? So look, this is the what the clause, which is called an adjective clause. Why is it an adjective clause? First of all, it's a clause because it has a connector and the connector is the subject itself. There's a verb and there's, you know, here, um, what this we call, guys, fast is an adverb because we're describing the adjective. Any word that describes huh, the verb is called an adverb. Okay? So types, how types fast. Okay? Type is a verb. Type, yatba, tatba. All right? Types, in which kind of way? See, we're defining types. So any word that defines a verb wow. right, is called an adjective. Okay? It's called what? Uh, an adverb. Because why did I say the word adjective? Because adjective is a description. But here I changed my mind. Instead of saying adjective, I said adverb. Because here it doesn't describe just, you know, a noun. It describes here an a verb. So adjectives or, you know, let me say words that describe verbs are called not adjectives. They're called adverbs. And how can you memorize this and make it not too hard on yourself? Because look, verb adverb so it's like something additional for the verb something that modifies modifies guys behadid wasif the verb okay so an adverb is a word that describes the verb or explains it more or defines it or modifies it okay this is why we call this although we're used to fast as an adjective but like i said here in the sentence it's describing the the, it describes the verb types, and that's why we call it an adverb, all right? Anyway, it's a complement, even though, because complement means whatever is said in the sentence, okay? That's what it is. Anyway, so all of this clause here is a clause that really can replace an adjective, right? Because all of this clause who types fast is a description for the secretary that this businesswoman needs, Okay, guys, I hope that this is clear and that it's not difficult for you to understand. Now, we have another sentence, as you can see down here. A secretary, uh, now with the, the, the clause here is used, you know, the adjective clause is used to describe the noun. A secretary who types fast, uh, we can ignore this altogether, is invaluable. What does invaluable mean? It means very, very 
Very, very what? Invaluable. Yes, Mr. Mahmoud Matarim, tell me. I'm confused, uh, to be Why honest. Confused. Invaluable means very valuable. Instead of saying very valuable, huh? I mean, Zuqime. Yes. Yeah, Zuqime, Aliya. Ayo, Aliya. Add the word Aliya, not just Qime, because valuable means Qime. Mm. Now, invaluable means more than valuable, okay? Uh huh. That's okay. more than that is very valuable. More than valuable means very valuable. I want, to ask a question. I want to ask you a question. A secretary who types fast in English and in Arabic, you know, is that person someone who is invaluable? You tell me, yes or no? I think yes. Yes, exactly. So this is the sentence. The sentence is a, a sentence that we all agree on, you know. A secretary, yes. we're, we're describing as a... Imagine that you work at a, de a department and you tell the secretary to type something for you and she says, well, I need three hours. But imagine that you give the secretary something to type and, you know, you give it to her and she's like, you know, five minutes later, it's, okay. it's like the document it's is you, you know? Yes. So what do you say? Now you are sitting with your colleague and you're talking and you say, what? you know what? A secretary who types very fast or who types fast is invaluable. Is invaluable means is irreplaceable. Is something great to have. Okay, guys? That is basically what, you know, that is. Anyway, so a secretary here is the subject. This is the uh, who types very fast is the clause or the adjective clause that describes a secretary and uh, is invaluable is the rest of the uh, clause, which it, I want to ask you, when you say a secretary is invaluable, is this clause the dependent clause or independent clause? A secretary you know, a secretary is invaluable. Is this a dependent clause or independent clause? Dependent. 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 Listen to me. Listen to me. A secretary. A secretary is invaluable. Is this a dependent or independent? Independent. Independent. Oh, yeah. Independent, of course. The no, one no, no, that is, independent that is the clause that is dependent is the one that starts with the connector. Please, guys, always remember that. Who types fast is dependent because it begins with the connector who. And try to make it stand on, on. Can anybody in the world say who types fast and it's considered a sentence by itself, like far away from this uh, sentence that we're using right now? No, but the secretary is invaluable. People say these sentences. Yeah, secretary is invaluable. Uh, you know, right? We say sentences like that. It's a com completely yeah. sentence. Yes. Yeah, it's, it could it could be, we want to say. Do you it know could why it could be? Because now it's part of the clause. That's why we're not saying it is. We're saying it could be. Okay? So okay. I want to take a look at the sentences in the exercise. All right? And uh, try to, you know, complete these, uh, you know, tell me whether these sentences are correct or incorrect and whether they are, um, let me say, um, what are the elements of this, you know, let me say of the, these sentences according to the, uh, let me say, instructions, okay? I'm going to give you some time to look at the sentences and then, then let's do number one. So if you want to discuss number one, please raise your hand. Shema. Okay. Yes. Uh, the ice cream that is uh, served in the uh, restaurant has a smooth, uh, creamy uh, te uh, texture. Hmm. Uh, the sentence is correct because uh, the ice cream is the subject uh, and uh, has uh, the uh, verb of the, uh, the ice cream subject. But and that is a connector and the subject at the same time for is serve the verb. Good. Correct. So 100%. Thank you so much. So it says here, guys, underline the subjects. Yes, the ice cream, as your friend Shay Matt said, is the, the one of the subjects. The other subject here, guys, is that because it's the connector and the subject at the same time. Now, we can tell from the beginning, you know, that that is served in the restaurant is an adjective clause as you can see. So it, it describes the ice cream. Which ice cream are we talking about? That is served in the restaurant. Right? That's what it means, all right? Now, as 
is needed here, guys. They also want us to identify the verbs. So the first verb, guys, is this one, has, because the ice cream has a smooth, creamy texture. So this is the first verb for the, uh, you know, independent clause. Now for the dependent clause, which is the adjective clause, all right? You know, this, that is also a connector, but also a subject. And we said this is served. Uh, and it's a passive. Listen, it's a passive verb, all right? Um, is the verb, the second verb, all right? Uh, of the second clause. So what else do they want? They tell you circle the connectors. Okay, the subject here is the connector, right? Because, you know, it's going to connect between this clause and the bigger clause, which is the uh, independent. This is the dependent clause, and this is the independent clause, the one below it, the ice cream has a smooth, creamy texture, right? And it says here, put boxes around the adjective clause. Where is the adjective clause? Of course, this is the adjective. There's a box around it, as you can see. That is served in the class, uh, in the in the restaurant, I'm sorry. Then indicate if the sentences are correct or incorrect. What do you think? We have all the elements needed for us to consider this sentence as one that is correct, right? So this is a correct sentence. They have the answer, but we guys, if someone tells you this is correct, even if the whole world tells you it's correct, you have to know that it's correct by identifying the elements, reading it over, getting used to, you know, let me say the examples that were discussed in the skill, right? Thank you so much. Dr. Sahar, your turn. If you would like to help us explain, guys, please raise your hand and be part, be part of the discussion. Okay. Uh, uh, number two, the mm -hmm. car are trying to enter the freeway system are lined up for blocks. Uh, there's a uh, missing. Uh, Dr. Sahar, I want to ask you to do me a favor. When we have S, don't ignore the S. Pronounce it. Because it makes a difference. When you say the girls, cars. the girls. The car, the cars. There's a big difference. You know that. I know it's just a slip of a tongue, they say sometimes, yes. you know, because, you know, you want to read and you forget. But please try to emphasize the S because the S means that we're talking about several. Without the S, it means one. See, that's the, that's, it's a major difference. So we have to be careful. Okay. Just be careful with that. I know that you know, okay. but okay. It's just okay. an extra, you know, let me say a piece of advice. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Dr. Uh, the cars are. The cars are trying to enter the freeway system are lined up for blocks. Good. Uh, there is a missing element in these sentences. Uh, it is a connector which because uh, ah, the cars uh, uh, has a verb are lined. Good. So there is a, the subject of our train is missing. We need connector here for uh, to be subject to uh, our thing. Correct. Good job. Thank you so much. You did amazing. Yes. Uh, there's a problem. Thanks. Yeah. There's a problem with the sentence, as your friend just said right now. We have the cars. Fine. This is a subject of the sentence. The cars are trying to enter the freeway system. Okay. Yeah. And we, if we stopped here, we would go, okay, the cars are trying to enter the freeway system. But the problem is, look, guys, we have a, like a, you know, let me say, like we kind of stutter. We kind of feel that there's you know, something wrong now because are lined. We don't do this in English. We don't say the cars are trying to enter the freeway station. And then we say are lined. Okay. Two verbs in this kind of way. So we have two verbs. That means there must be two clauses. And this is not how we connect clauses with each other in English. This is what we say. Like, imagine if we stopped here, I would say 100% correct. But the problem when we came across the second verb and we don't have a connector, that's when we say stop. There's something wrong. Where is the connector? Okay, we have to ask that question right away. Okay, when we reach this area. Okay, so all right. So let's try to work this out, okay? We want to kind of cover this because we know that there, there's a way where there is a, uh, let me say an adjective clause can describe the subject, which is the noun, noun subject, okay? So let's cover this up for a minute. Cover it for a second, okay, or two. The cars, huh? not only this here, but you know all of this because this goes with each other. The cars try to jump over this, you know, part of a clause, which is wrong. The cars, are lined up for blocks. This is correct, but it's still part of a clause because there's something that we jumped over, okay? The cars are lined up for blocks. That means that there are so many cars on the road, guys, on the, uh, I would say in Arabic, autostrad, 
the freeway. Freeway in English means in Arabic, autostrad, all right? And guess what? I don't know if you've ever seen this before, but they are lined up for blocks, blocks, like a very, you know, uh, you know, long distance, okay? They're not moving forward. Um, why? Because it's the rush hour, guys. It's the time when everybody goes home or everybody goes to work, you know, or let me say not everybody. Everybody means most of the people. All right. Because that's when, you know, let me say work time, you know, um, comes to an end. Right. Huh? Most in America, they fixed a little bit this problem. They never can fix this problem. I mean, but they try to fix this problem by doing two things. First of all, there is some people start out at seven. And some start out at eight and others start out at nine. This is nice, by the way. Isn't it nice to have some people start out at eight, others start out at nine, people who work in different workplaces and others start out at nine. And of course, based on that, those who begin at seven go an hour earlier. Those who begin at eight, you know, um, let me say, uh, stay long, not longer, same time, but I mean, they leave when they leave the workplace an hour after those uh, that go that leave at seven. And those who begin at nine also, they kind of, you know, go home a little bit after those, uh, an hour after those who begin at eight. And guess what? In America, they also tried fixing this problem in another way. Who knows the other way besides this time that I just to told you, this time schedule, division of time schedule. We have that at Yermuk. Some people start at eight, others start at nine, you know, um, things like that happens sometimes. I don't know if you're aware of that, all right? Maybe you choose your classes to be at eight or nine or something like that. But there's also something else, the online classes, guys. What is the goal of online classes? Like now, me and you are taking online classes. Uh, do we have to drive to the workplace? Tell me yes or no. Do we have to drive to the workplace? Yes, doctor. Now, yes. now. We have to drive to the workplace now. No, of course not. This is, not why, now. this is why online classes, although they are not the best kinds of classes, but they are good classes, let me say, to a certain extent, because they save money sometimes. They save you from driving on the roads time. They save time, all right, sometimes. Like I said, and um, we're doing the work as much as we can, right? So online work sometimes also helps reduce traffic because we're talking about traffic here in general, all right? So online work is also another, you know, method that, you know, people, workplaces have used, you know, to, you know, kind of, um, let me say, um, try to, let me say, solve this traffic problem all right because you know this will always continue the traffic the people you know wanting to do their work you know they all have want to be independent have their own cars and go and come and not be you know you know um not having let me say circumstances you know control them right yeah anyway back to our sentence all right what did we say what's the problem with this sentence guys the problem is that when we decided to describe the cars we noticed something look there is no connector and the connector itself, you know, is not here. It won't work, guys. So the cars, huh, which are trying, huh? So the connector itself is the subject, guys. Okay. So the cars, which are trying, you can say that are trying. And it's fine if you want to say that, by the way, if you want to say which, it's fine. Because the cars are also an object, you know, that ob object meaning like not a human being in that kind of way. Okay, so the cars that are trying to enter the freeway system, huh? you know, sometimes there are some streets that are not main streets and, you know, there are cars on those other roads. They want to enter the freeway. The freeway means the, you know, main road. They can't. You know why? Because there are already so many cars, you know, lined up for blocks. You know what some people do? I'm sure I'm sure that Mr. Mahmoud, if he were driving, he would take another route. You know how the other routes? Mr. Mahmoud, that can take you to wherever you want to go without having to drive on the freeway, you know, roads, roads like that and routes like that. Can you repeat it? Uh, I was saying, do you know how to, to go from one place to another without having to drive, you know, on the freeway? Some people are very good. They know the, you know, those little roads between, you know, you know, let me say uh, the houses and towns, let me say, and they don't have to drive their cars on the freeway to get to places. They're very good with roads. Yes, yes we, we say, we say it about it, it's between. Uh-huh, what is it? 
between yeah between يعني houses between houses يعني yeah smooth uh, smoothly Yeah, some people are very good. They memorize now with Google, uh, not Google. Is it Google? Yeah, Google Maps. I mean, yeah, it's very helpful, right? Yeah, it's it could be a little yes, bit exactly. right. Yeah. All right, let's move on. So I hope that sentence two, you know, was a sentence that was clear to you, and you know, you understood where the problem area is. We want to move on to sentence six, and then ten. Six, then ten. Where are your hands? Do I see Raida Ababne? Would you like to, you know, also help us out with? Um, that please do. The neighbors report that a man who was trying to break into the car to the police. Uh, I think that's a good Raida, can you speak up a little bit? The neighbors, I heard her by the way. It's you know, it kind of okay. not so clear, but it was good for me. Yeah, okay. The neighbors reported the man who was trying to break into the car to the police. Mm. It's a correct sentence. Good. Because we're talking about the man now. The man is going to be described with a clause, with an adjective clause. So yes. what do you see? Who was trying to break into the car? Can you tell us a little bit about the sentence? The, the sentence is correct, by the way. Because as you can see, okay. Raida is going to explain it a little to us. Can you explain it a little to us, Raida? Okay. Correct. The new person is the subject. The new person is the subject, which has the verb uh, was trying. Uh, sorry, um, reported. Reported is the verb, um, and um, uh, who was trying to break uh, is the adjective closed connected. Thank you so much. Okay. Correct. 100%. Nothing is wrong with this sentence. As your friend said, the neighbors is the main subject. Look, the main subject. When I say the main subject, I mean the subject of the independent clause. Okay, when I say main subject, the neighbors. Now, reported is the main verb, main verb, all right? Uh, the man is the object of the main sentence, let me say, or the main clause, I want to say, main clause, all right? Now, this over here, till the very end over here, is the adjective clause. And this adjective clause has the connector and the subject as the same, as you can see. So the adjective clause is used here to describe the man. The neighbors reported the man. The neighbors and a jiran, guys, you know that, all right? Reported, guys, yani, shteku, shteku, guys. To report something is tishteki, you know, like to complain, all right? Which man are we? Are, have they reported? Who, look which man, who was trying to break into the car? To break into something means yaktahim in Arabic, all right? To break into something is to try to enter something illegally illegally all right just to let you know so we don't you never want to break into something all right ever in your life it's not yours it's not you know so and you should never do something like that huh so sorry so to the police is i'm sorry guys uh, is part of this main clause okay i just noticed okay uh you know reported the man to the police okay it's like that this is part of this because they reported the man to the police okay um but here up to here not to the police is not part of it this area over here who was trying to break into the car is the second clause okay i can tell all right because we're describing here we're describing here the man which man who الذي, huh? was trying to break into what the car So this is the man that was reported by the neighbors. So nothing is wrong with this sentence. It's an amazing sentence and it's correct and it's, you know, full of, you know, meaning. All right. Yeah. Do you guys have a question? So we can say that this is a correct sentence. We have discussed the elements of the sentence that make it correct. All right. And I hope that this is something that you understood very well. How about we go for sentence what? Which sentence do you want to discuss now? How about we go for six maybe? How about six? Mr. Mahmoud, do you want to discuss six for us, please? I think uh, she she read the six. She? I'm looking at six, six says the racket. Did I make a mistake? Number oh, six. Oh, okay, okay, I'm It sorry. Six, no, no, you're right, you're yes. right, by the way. You're right. She did yes. six, yeah. Uh, do you want to do eight or ten? You choose, Mr. Mahmoud. Either eight or ten. Anyone? Hey, hey, let's do eight. Let's do more. Eight and then ten. Okay. The sales Tom. click can sales click run 
after the women who had left. What are you uh, what, are, what are you reading? This is the sentence that nine, I said. Nine. Number nine. nine. Oh, the sales clerk? Okay, yeah, fine. The sales clerk. <laughs> uh, what do you want? Anyone? Oh, no, go ahead. You can choose. You're free. The sales clerk. Yella, go ahead. No, no, we're not going to fight over the sentence. You're going to read the nine. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. The sales clerk ran after the woman who had left her credit card in the store. That's me. I'm the woman who left the credit card in the store. This happens to me. Okay. Yes, so we do this. I think uh, it's correct. Uh-huh. 100%, Mr. Mahmoud. You're amazing. So yes. you're on top of things. See how see how you trained your listening and your listening does not mean hearing. It means everything. This too, the concentration, yes. all that. Okay. Yeah. Correct. So there's some uh okay, so let's take a look. The sales clerk, as you said, is the subject, you know, the you know, subject you know, from the verb. Friend. For him, if the store is for him or not, it doesn't matter. So someone who's you know works in selling, you know, some kind of product, ran after, you know, ran. It really means, but you know, after because the the woman had left the place, you know. So maybe he left the store. That's why we say after. Uh, who the the woman? The woman is the object now. Not in. He's not going to run after any woman, guys. Come on, okay. Now the woman that he ran after is described in a certain way. What? How is she described? This is it. By what? A noun clause. Sorry, an adjective clause. I'm sorry. Why did I say a noun clause? An adjective clause. Where we're describing the woman who had left her credit card huh, um, in the store. So the woman, she, you know, gave the credit card. The man, you know, kind of, uh, you know, let me say, took the money uh, using the card. All right. But at the same time, the woman, you know, took her bag and left. All right, and forgot about her card and he did not give it to her, you know, quickly. So she thought that she was done with, you know, the process of buying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't forget your things because the kids or the family members if there are no kids I don't know who's there you know they will be mad at you <laughs> he's everyone okay yeah so yes 100% so who had left her credit card in the store is the adjective clause look it has who which is also the subject had left is the verb you know and then object, you know, credit card is the object. And then we have a prepositional phrase, as you can see, and everything's great and amazing. We want to do sentence 10. And I think somebody raised their hand a minute ago. Who wants to ex explain sentence 10? Somebody who has not been naming their name right. Who has not been naming their name right? Guys, someone among you guys huh, does not have a proper name. So who is that someone who was raising their hand and wanted to participate but then you know their name is probably not you know there uh, is not let me say where there is the name you know you can change your name where you can put your name they have not done that let me try to find this person okay let me see so I don't know where your classmate is now because this person has disappeared all right okay I don't know where that person is. They have left, all right? Anyway, who wants to work with us right now? Who has not participated today? I think all of you have, right? So Ghaida, Shayma, Mahmoud, Sahar, all of you have spoken today. Let's give the floor to Shayma again since, you know, um, it's been a while. Would you like to work on 10, Shayma? How about that? Okay. Go ahead. The shoe is which uh, made uh, the dress that was on sale. Uh, the, the sentence is uh, incorrect because they're uh, missing the verb. Mm -hmm. uh, you should uh, uh, add the verb after. Uh, well, uh, after, okay, uh, okay. After was, I think. I think. 
I think there's an extra word, Shayma. If you look at the sentence, there's an extra connector, which and that. Why? So if you look, we have two connectors. Why two connectors? You know, try to leave one out that is suitable. So the shoes, which match the dress, huh? was on sale. Well, that's amazing. I would be so happy if I bought a dress and then I found a shoe that matches the dress and is also on sale. On sale means, you know, on a reduce, you know, you can buy it, you know, with a reduced price, a less price than it's really, you know, you usually, you know, has, right? Um, so I think the problem here, Shayma, do you agree with me that there's, there are two connectors? Look, there's which and there's that. Why do we have two connectors? Do we need two? I think we need one to connect the clauses with each other, not two. So take a look. What okay, you, you should uh, delete that on okay. this sentence. Exactly. This is what you should do. Can you yes. read the sentence without that and see how it sounds? The shoes which made the dress was on sale. Good. See? So the shoes, this is the subject uh, of the main yes. sentence. Uh, of the main clause, let me say, all right? The shoes, now we want to describe those shoes, which match the dress. You know what to match the dress means? Illi, guys, يعني هذا الحداء اللي بعمل matching مع الدرس اللي مناسب للفستان. So there's a girl who, you know, wants to buy a dress. Doctor, can we, can we delete, delete which? Why do you want to delete it? If you, if you delete it, you will make a big fat mess. The shoes match the dress that was on sale. So it's messy. So the shoes match. Shoes the match. Oh, you can. The dress you can. Listen, that was on sale. Listen, I'm thinking. I'm thinking like just like you, by the way. Okay, the shoes uh, match the dress, and the dress that was on sale. Yes, you can. So it, listen, guess what? I want to tell you something. We can delete it or that, but not both. So you decide which one do you want. So this works and that works. One but... connector, not both. One. Yes. And which by the way, order? if you leave which, it's fine. And if you leave that, it's fine. But both of them, you cannot. Okay? Okay. So choose one of That's them. Right. If you want to say the shoes which match the dress huh, was on sale, is fine. And if you want to say the shoes match the dress, that, the was, dress, that fine. was on sale. Yes, you can say it. So one of them, not two. Okay. Because if you use the second connector, it is going to be a clause that describes the dress. If you use the first connector, it's going to be a clause, an adjective clause that describes the shoes. But you can't have them both. Okay, guys? Do you agree? Read it and see, and you will understand that both are fine, but you have to choose one. You can't have both. Okay? Okay. okay. All right. Let's move on to, uh, like I promised, we're going to skip... We're going to skip reduced clauses. By the way, like I told you what reduced clauses are, reduced clauses are the clauses that we have been working on, huh? but there is some reduction. Reduction means that we can remove part of the clause and it can be correct. Um, by the way, look at the sentence, just, you know, just a quick look, you know, I'm not going to go into the details. Look at this. My friend should be on the train, the train, which is arriving at the station. Okay, so this guy, which is arriving at the station, is a clause. You know that. It has a, it has a connector. It has a verb. It has, you know, let me say, uh, uh, we, say uh, we say a compliment, a prepositional phrase, etc. So we're describing the train. Now, in English, sometimes you can delete some parts. So what re I want you to know what reduced means. To reduce means to make less, to make smaller, to remove some elements. So we can really reduce parts of the clause. Yeah, تقليل من الجملة أو إنه تقليص. Correct. Yes, and it's still correct. Okay. So, بس أهم شيء ما يأثر على المعنى. Yes, exactly. It won't, you know, change the meaning. So if we remove which is and we say my friend should be on the train arriving at the station, it's correct. So this is what we mean by reduce clause. So if we remove the connector and we remove the part of the verb, not the whole verb. Look, this is is arriving is present continuous. Just is out of it. So, and it means as if in Arabic we say dhimni. Ilma'na dhimni. The words are there, but they are implied. Implied means dhimni. Okay? So when we say my friend should be on the train, you know, arriving at the station, it means also which is arriving, even if we don't say it. Just like when we use in Arabic, you know, dhamair al-mustatira, right? Huh? It's the same. They're there, but they are, 
you know, like contained. Contained means limni, guys, all right? So this is what the reduced clause is about. But mm, students did not like, you know, the idea that later on in, in when they were examined, they felt that ex being examined in them is hard, but learning them is not hard. <laughs> like to discuss these sentences and say, like, you know, it's, you know, that it's a good idea to reduce, you know, these clauses and you can reduce them in this way. It's great, but I mean, to be examined in them was not a piece of cake, okay? This is what the students did not like. Even look, let's skip this sentence. Look, look at, let's look at one of these, okay? Look at one of these guys, huh? I'm sorry, lift this up a little. Look at this one, this sentence, the last one, the pitcher. The pitcher, that is on the pitcher, guys, like all right? Like that has, you know, a kind of container that we put water in. We use it in the summer. OK, we, you know, we put water and ice and sometimes slices of lemon or mint or something of that kind. So anyway, the picture that is the the, you know, the piece that has the water in the object that has water inside. What about this picture? The picture huh? that is on the table. So this is what, guys, an adjective clause, as you can see, that is on the table. And this looks like the adjective clause. You know, let me say uh, the adjective clauses that we were discussing right now, where the subject and the connector are the same, right? So the picture that is on the table, hmm, see, this is an adjective clause, huh? Uh, is full of iced tea. Meli bi shay al mutallaj. You know that nowadays we have a lot of iced tea, and people are you know love iced tea. Iced tea is something that you know people loved you know in America all the time from the beginning of time. Here it was not common. People loved you know, just hot tea. But I think it's becoming very popular in Jordan for people to buy iced tea and drink it, right? Not like before. So anyway, the, the thing is just to tell you that can you can say the picture on the table so you can remove, delete, reduce this clause by removing that and by removing, imagine guys, the verb to be and directly moving on, you know, to the prepositional phrase, the picture on the table, huh? is full of iced tea. Of course, there are conditions, guys. You have to memorize the conditions where you can reduce. You can't really reduce anything for, you know, there are certain things that you can reduce, all right? So got the idea? This is what reduction clauses are about. I just don't want you to be scared of them and think that we did not take them because they're very hard. They're not, okay? And they are things that, you know, probably you have heard of before and you don't feel that they are weird or anything. But, you know, so many students just don't like the idea of being examined <laughs> in these re reduced clauses, all right? Um, this is their problem. If you want to take a look at another example, let's look together, guys. It's always, always good. I really like the idea of showing you, you know, what we do in these with these reduced clauses. But like I said, I'm not going to examine you because my goal is not to scare you or to, you know, examine you in a way where you feel that, you know, all your hands are, you know, being, let me say, um, kind of, uh, you know, held, you know, in a way where you can't move or something of that kind. I want to give you some kind of freedom as well. And I want you to feel that you can pass and you can make it and you can do well. All right. Let, let's look at one of these sentences. Uh, so we're going to reduce what here adverb clauses. Look, although he is rather unwell. Okay, although he is rather unwell, so we're using what kind of clause? Huh? Adverb clauses here, all right? This is an adverb of concession. This looks like, you know, the conditional sentences, guys, right? Conditional sentences where we have an, a clause, you know, let me say a connector here, all right? Then we have here, uh, present simple, and here we have future. Huh? The speaker, the subject, will take part in the seminar. So although he is rather unwell, we can erase or remove the subject he, we can remove the verb to be, as you can see, and you can read it like this, although rather unwell, which means he is rather unwell, okay? So these are other ways to reduce also, the speaker will take part in the seminar. So the speaker is the person that I, you know, let, my, let me say kind of reduced here because we can understand what we're talking about or who we're talking about because it's mentioned here, okay? Yeah, and because we know the rule, the thing is that, you know, with these kinds of clauses, they look like the conditional clauses, type one. We know the rule that here we have present simple. So if we wanted to make, uh, you know, uh, you know, provide a return for these reductions, we can. Do you know why? Because we know the rule. Because with conditional clauses, type one, with adverb clauses, they look like conditional clauses, type one. We have present simple here. We have future simple here. That's the thing. All right. 
So, you know, I just want you to look at these clauses just in general and just feel that they're not impossible. They're just, you know, sentences that people use that contain different clauses. You know, whenever we say clauses, that means there, there are two clauses, okay? And there's always a connector. Please remember that. We want to do one thing today, guys, one more thing, and then we're going to stop. The one more thing that we're going to do today is that we're going to discuss something not hard. It's something very easy today. That's why we're going to take it, guys, which is uh, this today. Invert the subject and the verb with questions. This is very easy. And I bet all of you know that when we create questions, uh, we what? We invert the subject and the verb. Do we invert the subject and the verb? You know what invert means? First of all, you have to understand the meaning of the of invert. What does invert mean? Al Invert means Yes. Tabdil you guys like this. So these things are like this. We do this. Just like this. We don't go, you know, very far away. Just be careful, guys. No, it's just a you know, a change. Why do we have this change? Because we are changing, you know, a statement, a statement, a statement, yani ibara, guys, jumle, muthbete, huh? to what? To a question. And with questions, there's a change in word order. You know that, huh? So look at these, I'll, I'll, you know, examples. Through the examples, you will understand more. So invert, you have to understand invert means exchange, tabdeel, all right? What are we going to exchange? The subject and the verb, yani the subject, Huh? You know, in English, guys, we say the man is nice. Make this a question. You tell me, make it a question. How can you make this a question? The man is nice. What am I going to invert? The man, the man is, huh? The man is nice. Compliment. So, you have a question. Is, is the man? Yes. Nice. Leave nice the way it is. Is the man nice? It turned into a question. <laughs> This is what our lesson is all about. Is this hard? No, it's not. You know, these are things that happen, you know. In it's pretty easy. Yes, exactly. Uh, and I want to tell you something. The uh, sentence to the question. It's very oh, easy. Inversion happens not only to it's the It's very story. easy then. I told you that we will go up, 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 and then we're going to go a little bit, you know, straightforward like this you know i told you it won't always be the hardest is the reduction clauses not because they are hard like i told you if you go if you read them because we looked at some sentences you saw they're not hard okay you can understand them but students found it hard not to understand them but to be examined in them okay that's what their problem was okay we hate the exams <laughs> so <laughs> like discussing them talking the about exams in my life well, listen to me. I want to tell you something. Everybody hates exams. You know what Napoleon said? Napoleon. You heard of Napoleon before. He said that the hardest thing in the world is an exam for him. So he said that, you know, uh, battling, you know, let me say, and being a leader of an army was not that difficult for him. But, you know, you know, entering a, an exam room was one of the most difficult things for him in life. And that's Napoleon. Can you imagine? <laughs> All right. So he was, you know, the yeah. you know, the leader of France for some time. You know, he's a historical figure. You know, he had, you know, he has done, he done, he had done a lot for France, you know, before, you know, let me say, you know, saying that. All right. So for him, he said that during, you know, the end of his life. All right. Yeah. So anyway, there is some confusion about when to invert the subject and the verb. When can we invert? Invert, invert means exchange the places. Okay. After question words, such as what, when, where, why, and how. So listen, these are questions, as you can see. huh? Um, after these questions words, what, when, where, we have, you know, let me say the verb coming before, you know, let me say the subject. And sometimes, look, huh? look, sometimes if the verb is made up of more than one verb, let me say, because, you know, in the present continuous, we have two sections, two divisions, verb to be, verb ing, you know. We only invert the first verb and the rest goes later. See where going is? Here, for example, you know, um, we say, I can leave. I can leave. It's really, I can leave. Why didn't we put 
can leave here and then I. We, do, we don't do that. We only use the first part of the verb to be inverted, not the whole thing, just the first part. Like if the verb is made up of one word, then that's fine. You bring the verb first and then the subject. If the verb is made up of two, we just take the first part and we do the inversion and the rest goes later after the subject, as you can see. Look, see? Huh? But if it's made up of three, same. We use the first part, then we go for the subject, then the rest goes later, okay? Just to let you know. So just look at that, okay? So we have different, you know, question words here. So this is uh, these are questions that have question words. We say, we call them WH questions, all right? So these words can have two very different functions in a sentence. First, they can introduce a question. And in this case, the subject and the verb that follow are inverted. Look at these questions, guys, huh? What is the homework, huh? What is this in Arabic? What does this mean? What is the homework? <laughs> this is a question that students always ask. So they're in the classroom and you tell them what the homework is. And then you leave, and then they ask their classmates, what did she say? What's the homework? <laughs> All right. Okay. So <laughs> we hit we hit the homework. Yeah. But the homework is what, you know, um, gets you to have, uh, you know, time with the material. And some students, you know, if you don't ask them to do homework, they will never read the material by themselves. So I think all of you guys are professors and teachers. What's your goal when you ask the student to do homework? Honestly speaking, it's not guys to punish you guys. We don't, you know that the goal is not to punish you, but some students think of homework as punishment. It's not. The goal for me, I have been teaching for, you know, let me say since 1999. And now it is, what is it? It's, we're, we're in 2023. So I have been teaching for 24 years and um, I developed, of course, why I give homework. You know, the reason why I give homework, it's not to punish guys. I will tell you this now after 24 years, I can tell you the reason is that I have discovered that most students, like 95% of students do not revise and do not study. And, you know, revising material is very important. All right, because if you jam work uh, and you save it for later, it will be hard to study it and understand it. You have to study step by step. And I know that you know that all of you guys don't need me to tell you that. But yet, although we are adults, we jam work. Don't tell me that you don't do that because I even do that sometimes. OK, and look at me. I've been teaching forever. So the thing is that. Uh, when we ask students to do homework, the goal is to, you know, make sure that student, that student reads the, let me say the lesson for him to be able to, let me say, do the homework. So the student comes to do the homework. Oh my gosh. They say, oh my gosh, this is hard. I can't do it. What am I going to do to be able to crack and to do the homework? Oh, let me read the lesson. Maybe it will be easier on me. And so do you know what the student ends up doing? Revising the lesson by himself or herself. All right. It doesn't matter what the way is that they do it. If they do it in detail, they uh, do a little bit to answer the question, it doesn't matter. The goal is to get you back to what we have been working on, engaged in it in a way where, you know, you kind of do some some form of revision. That's the goal. And that, you know, that from there you can build on, you know, for the next lesson and the next lesson and so on. So I do weekly homework, okay? My goal is not to um, ask the students to do something impossible, but to do something, even if it's a small thing about, you know, and I try to, you know, let me say, ask them to do something that kind of covers the whole material that we took, all right? But, you know, it's really one question. One question that I want, not more than that. But I tell them that with this question, I want a really good answer, not a repetitive answer that you collect from your friend. I want to see uniqueness in your answer, all right? And so they feel, you know, unique, all right? You know, giving that answer and probably they would go over them. And I always tell them, you know, my students, you know, that the way to have a unique answer is really to read the material and then think, Connect what you already know and what you have read and probably come up with, you know, some kind of an answer where there's a mixture of what you already know, what you think, what you believe with the material that is there. And then that's how you have a unique answer, right? What do you think, guys? I hope you agree with me. 
So when can I leave? All right. Usually this before when, before when the sentence was, can I leave? All right. It was a question, right? Can I leave? Um, so hmm, can I without when it's a but now with when the meaning is different, right? Huh? Can I leave? Oh. But you know what? As a sentence, it's like this. I leave every day maybe at uh, 7 o'clock to work or 7.30 to work. That's me. I leave to work at, you know, I leave to work at 7.30. So there's a, you know, a straightforward statement. But as a question, we have, can I? Huh? Can, can I leave? Yeah. The answer is yes or no. Uh, that's, yeah, when we have can I leave, but when can I leave, there's a different now answer. We have, an, uh, you know, an answer that should answer be. about the time. Yeah. We asked, uh, and yeah. it's a piece of information. You don't say yes. Yeah. With WH questions, you need a complete answer. So when can I leave? If you ask me when can I leave, I will tell you, you can leave in 10 minutes. I'm going to let you guys all leave in 10 minutes. Okay, guys? So that you know. Mm -hmm. I, I think you're asking me this question. When can I leave, right? In 10 minutes. <laughs> you can't leave in 10 minutes. Where are you going? See, we have the verb and then we have the subject. And notice that it's really, if you think about this, you are going, I am going. So um, I'm going to admit a friend of yours, a classmate of yours, but look at the title or the name of that person, okay? If you can connect with that person and ask them to kind of rename themselves, it would be better because you know you can't, you have that option where you can give yourself your name, I mean, not just any wording, all right? So like I said, here as a sentence, this might be, I am going home, right? Like if you respond, you might say, where are you going? I am going home. Huh? I am going to the mall. I'm going to school. I'm going to work, right? So it's this first and then this, the verb to be, and then this, right? But look here, when we change this into a question, hmm, we have the verb to be, the, the first section of it, we have the subject and then going, right? So... Um, and you can say, are you going home? If we don't have where, who would like to answer this? Are you going home after class? What will you yes. say? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Um, right? Yes. Yeah, so these words, which are called the WH questions, they change the question from a yes, no question to a WH question. And when we say yes, no, that means that you're going to respond with yes or no. But when we say WH, the answer to this question is a piece of information, and that piece of information could be put in a sentence. Sentence, all right? Anyway, look at this part also. Also, these words can join together two clauses. So we can also uh, join two clauses. In this case, the subject and the verb that followed are not inverted. So when do we not have inversion, guys? So don't invert, don't invert if we have what? Huh? Two clauses. Two yeah. clauses. Iowa, if we have uh, the subject, of, these words can go together two clauses. And in this case, the subject and the verb follow are, are not inverted. I do not know. So if we have this, I do not know. And when I can, when I can leave, huh? If we have these phrases, guys, do you know? If we have these introductions, Introductions means muqaddimat, before the uh, question. If we have these introductions, like I don't know, or when I can leave, or do you know, huh? we don't have here in virgin. So, so these are scenarios where we don't have in virgin. Okay, we have in virgin with the yes, no questions, with WH questions, but when we have an introduction, like we have to memorize these, by the way, I don't know. When I can leave, do you know? So when we have these introductions before what we might refer to as, you know, a question, huh? listen to me, we don't have in virgin. Okay? I just want to tell you that. Okay. These are exceptions. These are what? Exceptions. Even in Arabic, we have exceptions. You know, what is exceptions in Arabic? What does that mean? توقعات. No, exceptions mean istisnaat. <laughs> no. Yeah, things that don't follow the common rule, okay? Yani irregular cases. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Take a look at this sentence here now. So don't forget that these are irregular cases. We have to memorize that no inversion takes place. So look, I do not know. Look what the homework is. And we did not say what is the homework. We said what the homework is. Why? Because we have this introduction. I do not know. You have to memorize it. If it comes, then we don't have inversion. Okay?
يعني if this was not here guys we say what is the homework but because we put I don't know at the beginning huh, of it no inversion no inversion means لا تبديل the verb does not come here before the subject okay guys do you agree and look no question mark no question mark this should also help you that there is no question mark when I can leave hmm? when I can leave متى أستطيع المغادرة huh? comma I will take the first train huh? يعني it really means guys متى أو عندما أستطيع المغادرة huh? I will take when the first train when we can leave the lecture <laughs> when because can... the time is yeah let, let's it's just finished. Listen, listen to me. I want to finish this. I'm going to ask you to do homework, okay? Is that fine? All right? We just want to do okay. this. And then I told, because I just gave you the, uh, I just told you that I'm going to let you guys go in a few minutes. Give me a, give, give me a break, guys, okay? All right? <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you got the idea? So, I don't want to let you go before we finish this area. And then I want to give you homework because I have to give you homework. Remember what we said about homework right now? So, do you know... Do you know this introduction to look guys where you are going? Do you know? Ah, uh, what? What? There's a question mark. So there's a question mark, but look at the what at the verbs. Is there inversion? You tell me, is there inversion? Yes, no, or no? we can't. So there is no inversion. But why do we have a question mark? Do you know why we have a question mark? Because here, this introduction requires a question mark. Do you know? You see, this is why. The question mark is not for this. The question mark is for this. Do you know? Okay? Do you, do you guys know why we use the question mark? So there's a question mark. It's true. Huh? It's for this introduction. Okay? All right, because there is a verb here, as you can where see. Where is the connector? Not so but well. here, yes, it's the phrase. But here, where you are going, there is no inversion, as you can see. See, there's where, which is a WH question. There where is as a subject, and yes. uh, it's a and connector. Subject, subject and connector. Yes. In the same. Uh, see, I don't mind how you want to memorize this. It's up to you. All I want to tell you is that these introductions, so these phrases over here, whatever you want to call them, when they proceed, huh? When they proceed, okay. The let me say we don't have <coughs> don't have what. See, we have when we would expect there's inversion. We have what here. We would expect there's inversion. We have where here. We would expect there's inversion, but we don't have inversion. Look, the verb is after the subject here again. Huh? There's when. Look, we have the. What? The subject and the verb, all right? We have the subject and the verb here, look. Mm -hmm. So we have here, what? Where? We would expect there is a verb and then a subject, but we don't. So this is why I'm telling you that in these cases, we don't have inversion, okay? So all the cases where we don't have inversion look like these and have these beginnings, just to let you know, okay? I hope that this is clear. Let's take a look at this question. The lawyer asked the client. The lawyer asked the client. What? The lawyer asked the client. Why what? It Look, there's a period. Look, guys, there's a period. There is no question mark. So it's not going to be one, uh, you know, a sentence that has inversion. Since the, look what there is, this also helps you. There's a period. The lawyer asked the client. And I want to tell you something. In reported speech, this is called reported speech. Huh? We do not have a question mark we have a period because it is reported speech so even if it's a question it's going to be formatted as a sentence guys in sentence so which means not a question that means the style means subject verb and not verb subject okay no, 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 don't mix. This is something and that's something else. Be careful. Reported speech, is that you have to assume that you heard a sentence and you are reiterating it. But it's not your question, so it comes uh, as a sentence, not a question anymore. You switch from a question to a sentence. Be careful. Passive madakhalo. This is something else. This is what students do. They mix the word world together in a way in a weird way. They put apples and oranges. This is apples and oranges, what you just said right now. Be careful. Not related. Okay, okay. Oh, uh, Lawyer I asked know. the client. The lawyer asked the client. And look, period, which means subject, ver subject then verb. Why what? he did it. What, guys? Did he do it? Why did he it? 
Why he did it? Why did it? Why he did it? Good job. Excellent. He did. Good job. Why? That's clear. Very clear. Uh, very easy. <laughs> yes, I'm glad. I'm glad. So this no, forget it. This no, this no. Subject verb. This is the only one. There's a period. Although we have why. Because some people, guys, they get messed up because they have why. But remember, there's a period here. And remember, once you see something like this, the lawyer asks the client, this reminds us of these phrases. Although it's not the same exactly thing, but still, I'm telling you a piece of information about reported speech. When you report what someone says, uh, you are, and, and even if it's a question, you are changing the question into a statement. Statement means like a sentence. And that means the order is not going to be verb subject. It's going to be subject verb. Okay? And how do you know? Look, there's a period. They, they tell you it's a period. Period means statement. Subject verb, not verb subject. Okay? Although there's... Okay. One. So don't let Y mess you up. We're going to stop here, guys. I know that you guys are tired. It's been a long day. You guys go over that with the rule in the table. Okay? We will go over it together also next time. And please try to answer the questions. And we will do, uh, you know, let me say, or cover as many sentences as possible from these tomorrow and we will talk about other methods of inversion also next time inshallah so we will stop here we are uh, in this area we're going to work on this re revise the table and inshallah i will meet with you tomorrow you guys have a great evening and if you would like to contact me by, by email by whatsapp you are more than welcome and like i said any day you would like to come and visit me in the office i do not mind if you have questions for me if you want us to have a discussion one-on-one -on -one, face to face come please bring your book and we can do that all right you have a great evening goodbye Good goodbye goodbye